Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my video on the nervous system. Now, before you watch this, make sure you're confident on the basics of animal, plant, and bacterial cells, and there is a video on that early in the playlist, should you need. Now, in this video, we are going to be looking at the overall structure of the nervous system. Then we'll look at the different types of neuron, that's all the three nerve cells. Neurotransmission, which is how the nerve impulse goes from one nerve cell to another. And then finally, we'll be looking at the reflex arc, which lets you respond quickly to danger. So let's start by looking at the nervous system as a whole. Now, the job of the nervous system is to gather information um, about the world around us. And it gets that information from our senses, you know, from our sense of sight, touch, taste, smell and so on and make decisions about what to do with that information. Now, it does this on a very short time scale. You know, we can, if we need to, sense something about the world around us, process it and act on that information in under a second if we really need to. Now, the nervous system is able to do this by transmitting what we call electrical impulses along specialized cells, nerve cells, which we call neurons. Now, the nervous system is entirely made up of all these different nerve cells, but they're in two main parts. So part one of the nervous system is called the central nervous system, the CNS. And there are two parts to that. There is the brain and the spinal cord. Now, we've got the brain up there in our skulls, but also the spinal cord is this great big thick bundle of nerves that runs through the hollow channel um, that runs down our spine. Now, together, the brain and the spinal cord, that's the central nervous system. You are your central nervous system. All of your thought, all of your memories, all of your emotions, all of that takes place in your brain, which is, you know, the, the, the major part of your central nervous system. Now, the job of the central nervous system is to make decisions. So it's constantly receiving information from our senses and it's processing that information and deciding, can it be ignored? or should we act on that information? Now, the other part of the nervous system is the peripheral nervous system, or PNS. Now, this word peripheral is just really a fancy word, meaning something like around the edges. So it's really um, all of the nerves except for the central nervous system. And it looks something like this. So you can see we've got hundreds and hundreds of these nerve fibers running all the way through our body. And they're doing two things. They are, first of all, gathering information from our senses and sending it towards the central nervous system. But they're also sending information, sending decisions from the central nervous system back towards our muscles and other things like that in order to, to make actions happen based on the decision that the central nervous system has taken. Now, the nervous system is made up of three types of nerve cell or neuron called sensory neurons, relay neurons, and motor neurons. And we're going to look at each of those in turn. So let's start with sensory neurons. Now, sensory neurons are part of your PNS, your peripheral nervous system. And their role is to carry electrical impulses from sensory receptor cells towards the central nervous system. Now, these receptor cells, these are cells that are found in sensory organs that can detect a stimulus. Now, what does that mean? Well, our sensory organs are things like our ears. And so they contain receptor cells that can detect a sound stimulus. A stimulus is just a piece of information that the nervous system can detect and then respond to. You know, our eyes contain receptor cells that can detect a light stimulus. Our skin, massive sensory organ, can has, has receptor cells that can detect touch, um, heat, pressure, and various other different types of stimuli. So each different types of stimulus is detected by different specialized receptor cells um, that are all part of our different sensory organs. And the important thing about sensory neurons is that they can um, they carry the impulses from those receptor cells towards the central nervous system so that we can actually feel them, as it were. Now, there are lots of adaptations on these sensory neurons, so lots of different features that allow them to do their job. And the first thing is they have a long, what we call dendrites, um, or in the language of Edexcel, 
um, only at Excel for some strange reason, um, we might say dendron rather than dendrite. But they've got these long dendrites. So the dendrite is this whole structure here, starting with the feathery parts up there and going all the way down towards the cell body. And so that what this long dendrite does is it carries information from the receptor cells towards the cell body. Now, what's the cell body, you might be asking? The cell body is this round blobby section there, and it contains the nucleus and other cellular machinery. Now, you can see here that the impulse won't actually pass through the cell body because the cell body just sits off to one side. Now, we also have, as well as a long dendrite, we have a long axon. So the axon is this long section there, and it carries the impulses away from the cell body. Now, you will have noticed that both the axon and the dendron are surrounded by these yellow blobby looking structures. Now, this is what we refer to as the myelin sheath. And you can think of the myelin sheath as this sort of fatty layer. And its job is to insulate the nerve cell so that the electrical impulse does not escape. And also, it helps to speed up how fast the impulse can travel down the dendron and then the axon. Finally, we've got the axon terminals. So these are the kind of blobby parts at the end of the neuron, and these will connect to other neurons in order to transmit the impulse to other nerve cells. Okay, So the axon terminals connect to other nerve cells. Now, it's also just worth noting that sensory neurons, and in fact all nerve cells, are a bit of a one-way street. So the signal is always and only carried from the dendrites at the top down towards the axon terminals at the bottom. The nerves, nerve, is, nerve signal cannot travel up the other way, and the reasons for that will become clear later. Now, relay neurons. Relay neurons are part of the central nervous system, the CNS, and their job is to process information and to make decisions based on that information. Now, what they do is they receive impulses from sensory neurons, and they pass them on to motor neurons or to other relay neurons. Now, in terms of their adaptations, they've got really short dendrites here. So you can see there the dendrites are much shorter than they are on the sensory neuron, although they're still doing the same job. They're still carrying impulses towards the cell body. They've still got their cell body, which again has got the nucleus and other cellular machinery like you know, mitochondria and uh, ribosomes and so on. They've got an axon again, but this time it's a short one rather than a long one. And again, that axon is carrying the information away or the impulse away from the cell body. We've got axon terminals as well. So those axon terminals, again, they're going to connect with other nerve cells. And again, it's worth noting that the impulse is, a, or the um, nerve cell rather, is a one-way street. The impulse can only go down from the dendrites towards the axon terminals. It cannot go up the nerve cell. It's also just worth noting that there is no myelin sheath. Okay, so on the um, sensory neuron, we saw the both the long axon and the long dendron had the myelin sheath on it. There is no myelin sheath here, so you know none of those little sort of blobby, sausagey looking structures that we might expect. And the reason for that is just because the axon is so much shorter. Now, our final kind of neuron is the motor neuron, which is also found in the PNS, like the sensory neurons are. Now, their role is to carry impulses from the central nervous system to what we call effectors. Now, an effector is either a muscle or a gland. Um, and what they do is they carry out the actions, they carry out the effects that have been decided by the central nervous system. Now, just quickly, this word gland here, that might be a new word to some of you. A gland is an organ that secretes a substance. Okay. So, for example, in your mouth, your saliva is produced by salivary glands. On your skin, your sweat is produced by sweat glands. But also, all the way throughout your body, you've got lots of different glands that produce hormones like adrenaline and things like that that help your body to function in particular ways. 
Now, in terms of their adaptations, again, a bit like with a relay neuron, we've got these really short dendrites. So that there, that is our entire dendrite, not very long at all. And it's still carrying the impulse towards the cell body. We've still got our cell body with the nucleus and all of the other cellular machinery. Again, a bit like the sensory neuron, we've got a long axon this time. Again, it's carrying the um, impulse away from the cell body. And the myelin sheath is back. And that myelin sheath is doing what it was before on the sensory neuron. It is insulating the nerve cells so, the, so that the impulse doesn't leak away. And it is also speeding up how quickly the impulse travels along the axon. And lastly, we've got the axon terminals at the bottom. And you can see how those axon terminals are connected to effectors, to the effector. So if that effector was a muscle, when the, when the impulse reaches the muscle, it's going to switch that muscle on and make it contract. And again, just worth stating, this is a one-way street. The impulse can only travel from the dendrites down the axon towards the axon terminals. OK, so we've met our three different types of neuron, relay, motor and sensory. And now we're going to look at the idea of neurotransmission. Now, neurotransmission is the solution to a problem that you might not have realised was there. But the problem is this. Imagine we've got two um, nerve cells, neuron A and neuron B. A is a sensory neuron in this case, and B is a relay neuron, but it doesn't have to be that way around. Um, now, imagine an electrical impulse is travelling along neuron A, and it needs to go into neuron B. The trouble is, between the axon terminals of one of them and the dendrites of the next, there's that tiny little gap. And the electrical impulse cannot travel along that gap. And yet, somehow, we need an impulse from A to trigger an impulse in B. And the, the solution to that problem is called neurotransmission. Now, that gap that we were just talking about is called a synapse. So a synapse is the gap between the axon terminal of one neuron and the dendrite of the next neuron. And the process of how an impulse arriving at the axon terminal can cause an impulse in the dendrite is referred to as neurotransmission. Now, in order to understand the detailed process of how neurotransmission works, we need to understand the detailed anatomy of that synapse. So it looks like this. So first of all, the big blobby bit at the top is the axon terminal of neuron A, our first neuron. And the big blobby bit at the bottom is the dendrite of neuron B, the second neuron. The gap between them is called the synaptic cleft. Now, it looks quite big on that diagram, but actually that gap is absolutely tiny. Um, something like 0.02 micrometers wide. So we're talking a 50th of a micrometer, which is a 50,000th of a millimeter. So it's a really, really tiny gap, but still an important gap that needs to be crossed and, you know, that's what this neurotransmission is about. Now, you'll notice in the axon terminal, we've got these sort of round containers here that we call vesicles, and they contain those pink um, molecules, which we will refer to as neurotransmitters. Now, these are just molecules that are released by the axon terminal every time a nerve impulse reaches it. And you can see that release here, because you can see the way those neurotransmitter molecules have been released. And then, Lastly, on the dendrite of the second neuron, we've got these sort of little purple Y-shaped things. Those are receptor molecules that the neurotransmitter is able to bind with or stick to. So how does all of this anatomy work together to lead to neurotransmission? Step one is that an impulse arrives at the axon terminal of neuron A, our first neuron. What happens then is that that impulse causes the neurotransmitter molecules to be released by the axon terminal. And you can see that here, you can see there, one of our vesicles has burst open and is releasing those neurotransmitter molecules into the synaptic cleft. Now, those neurotransmitter molecules diffuse across the synaptic cleft. So that process there, where those um, neurotransmitter molecules are moving, that is diffusion 
from high concentration to low concentration. Then those neurotransmitters molecules, they reach the receptors uh, on the dendrite and they bind with them, they stick to them. If you look closely, you can see there, those little pink neurotransmitter molecules are sticking on to those receptors. And that then, that triggers the new impulse in neuron B. Now, this sounds like it would take a long time, but it's a super quick process. Like it takes less than a hundredth of a second for this process to happen. Um, and it's also worth noting, this explains why nerve cell or nerve impulses can only travel in one direction. They can only travel towards the axon terminal and then across um, the gap and the, the, the synapse and then into the dendrite because the dendrite hasn't got any neurotransmitter to release and the axon terminals don't have any receptors to detect it. So the, this, this ensures that this is a one-way street and it controls the direction of the flow of the impulses around the nervous system. Okay, now the last thing we're going to look at is the idea of the reflex arc. Now, a reflex action is a quick and automatic action that keeps us safe from danger. Um, I often think about this as just flinching. You know, we've all had that experience, you know, particularly on, on like a football pitch or somewhere like that, you know, where we're not paying perfect attention and suddenly out of the corner of our eye, we see a football flying towards our face. And without thinking, we just duck away. You know, there's no conscious control. We just duck. That is a reflex action and it's done to keep us safe from danger. Now, the reflex arc is the series of steps that are involved in triggering that reflex action and it works like this so the first step is that a stimulus is detected so that, that stimulus is something that needs to be responded to so in this example our stimulus is we've accidentally put our hand over a candle flame and so the stimulus is the dangerous level of heat coming from that candle flame and that stimulus is detected by receptor cells in the skin step two is that an impulse is carried up a sensory neuron from the receptor cells to the spinal cord. So we can see that happening here. So that, that red, um, that long red line there, that's supposed to represent our sensory neuron. And you can see it's carrying the impulse towards our spinal cord. Now, step three, relay neurons in the spinal cord decide Hold on a second, chaps, we're in danger. Something needs to happen. Let's move the hand. Now that is done unconsciously. You know, we are not aware of the sort of decision-making process in our spinal cord, but it still takes that decision for us without our brain needing to be involved at all. Okay. So the next thing then is that those relay neurons pass an impulse onto our motor neurons. So the motor neurons carry an impulse down to the effector. Now the effector is what's actually going to carry out the action. In this case, that effector is going to be an arm muscle like that. Okay. And so what will happen, the action will then be carried out. And that action is simply that the hand will move up and away from the, um, from the uh, flame. And then that will keep us safe. Now it's, this is a quick, automatic action that we don't need conscious thought for because conscious thought would slow us down and put us in danger for longer okay so that's it the end as always thank you for listening and well done if you got this far